Morning everyone, welcome back to another Twin Peaks adventure. Me and Simon back out again. And also our mate Danny. But he's up that way. Probably about half a mile ahead, something like that. Yeah, we're in uh, Southern Snowdonia. A place called the Renigvauer in between Trasmaniv and Bala. And we're going to take a hike up to the Renigvauer Boffy. Hopefully there's no one in there, but it's only a tiny one. It can fit about two or three people max. But if there's people in there, we've got our tents anyway, so not too much of a problem. Is it? I think there is going to be people there. I've got a funny feeling. Yeah, we've got a funny feeling there's somebody in there. But We've seen people, well, we've seen a bloke walking back down from here, and he's just come back up and past us, so I've got a funny feeling. He's staying there, maybe some other, so I don't know. So he could be carrying all that wood in vain. Danny's got a bag of coal. <laughs> Plus his 20 kilo pack. So we're going to hike up and we're going to have a look, see what it's like when we get there. Yeah, so if the boffy is occupied, then I've got my new tent today to put up. And... I'll show you that later. And that down there is Clint Kellin. And over that way is the town of Bala. Still in place. So we're heading up that way. And then you eventually come to the lake. And the bothy is by the side of the lake apparently so that's where we're heading right then guys I wasn't lying there's Danny hello we finally caught up with him they call me the mule <laughs> Mark Sherpa oh, look at him he's like a, it's like a pack horse all the stuff on him sorry Mark I'll carry all the wood oh, that's alright carry on you just carry the wood Simon's got wood <laughs> yeah <laughs> you carry the wood I'll get the benefit from it later how was that I pan round, look at that. That's Clint Arenig. And the Renig Vower is up the back of there, which we're going to take a hike up later. Have a look at that as well. And that mountain in the distance is Aaron Fauvry. And that's over 900 metres. And that's on my hit list of, or to do list, I should say. And that'll be another adventure and video for another day. Right, let's catch this pair up. Well, there's a boffy, and it looks like it's been taken. Bit of a bummer. But I'll be pitching my tent later. A brand new tent. Have a butcher's inside, is it? It's cozy to say the least, isn't it? Yeah. Right, what we're we gonna do? We're gonna stick all our rucksacks in the boffy. We're gonna go over the stile and then take a hike up to a Renig of our summit get up to the trig point and there's a there's also a plaque up there uh, to commemorate um, a crash of a an American plane from 1943 so that'll be interesting to see so yeah we're gonna put the bags in there and then we're gonna make a move
to start the ascent up to the summit of Renning Bower as normal. Danny's in the, in the lead. I was hoping to beat them to the summit, but I can't see that happening. Be younger than me, see. <sighs> So much easier, a lot of rucksacks. If you look down there, we've come a we've come a fair way already in a short space of time. So we're gonna hug up to the summit now. Walk back down to the Bothy area, and then I'm gonna pitch my new tent then. down there and where you're going up into the clouds and apparently that's where the summit is and the trick point we've got about a hundred meters to go and then the boulder field starts starts now yeah clags coming in clags coming in as usual This is pretty typical of snow zone, yeah. You get near the summit and it gets a bit rocky then. I'm not saying they're all the same, but all the ones we have have been like it, haven't they? Right. Let the mist roll in. Aye. Straight to the top, straight back down. Straight to the top, straight back down. Yeah. Tell you what, you can beat a bit of a scramble to the top of a mountain. Love it. Biting wind in your face. Rocky path. Boulder fields. Life doesn't get much better than this. There we go. Well, I'm panting like a, a mule here trying to get up this final stretch of. Uh, a Renning Bower and I've got to be fair, I love all these rocks I love all this, you know it makes the uh, the climb a bit more interesting um, everyone knows, we know that we love the beacons and I love going camping here it's brilliant, but this is the next level I just love all the rocks I'm not sure you can see it part because the clag's rolling thick you know. But Danny tells us five minutes we've got on the summit, so uh, I can't wait to get better. Gotta say, visibility's gone pretty crap with you. Mark and Danny are about 40 yards ahead. You can't see him here, so just reached the summit of a Renig Vawa. Eight five four meters above sea level, and up on the summit is a memorial of a B seventeen 
American Flying Fortress aircraft which crashed on the 4th of August 1943 killing all American crew you see all the names on there and where they came from and uh, apparently Danny was saying that picture was actually the first memorial down wasn't it? It was engraved, was that yeah, picture? Yeah, there, there was a different one before that it was more like a brass plaque with the picture engraved in oh. the plaque well somebody had defaced one of the crewmen and scratched their face out so um, that was the last time I came up here this was changed then, a couple of years back yeah and then this has been changed to an actual picture in a slate um, sort of picture yeah. uh, from some of the grandchildren of the crew came up and put it up from America I'm assuming yeah obviously yeah. from America yeah because America would have thought so and there's bits of the wreckage of the plane which has been left here as well it's all sad though, isn't it? So, yeah. apparently he was on a, on a training mission going back to Cambridge I think he was and uh, well I read I'm sure I read on Google and uh, obviously didn't make it because uh, here's a memorial of the crash Gotta be fair, that was cool, that was. That's another peak in the books. And seeing that memorial made it all worthwhile coming up here. Yeah, good stuff. Anyway, we're gonna head back down now, as quick as we can. Because I wanna put my tent up in the light, daylight, so I'll see you back down there. Welcome back, folks. Back down to the boffy. And lo and behold, the people that were there earlier, they've scarpered. So we've got their little place of ourselves now. So, yeah, happy days. Loads of firewood. But I think Danny's going to stay in there because he hasn't brought a tent. And me and Simon are going to pitch. We've seen a nice little spot by the side of the lake, so we're going to take our tents over there and I won't pitch up and then come back, have something to eat in here and have a fire, just get warmed up a couple of drinks, so yeah, happy days we found this little spot by there you got the mountains in the background and the lake so we're thinking that's looking pretty decent What do you reckon, Simon? Yeah, that's all right, yeah. yeah. And we've got that view to wake up to. And this is the moment you've all been waiting for, folks. The new tent. It is the Tab Tent Scarp 1. The tent. The tent. The tent, as Dive says. Right, this tent comes with one main pole that you fed through the yellow sleeve there and it also comes with two crossover poles these are optional but i thought i'd buy them and you could probably only use them in high winds but i brought them today just to just to famil familiarize myself and also by the end you've got these i think it's i think they're carbon it's like little carbon poles just carbon, yeah. built into the carbon. built into each end of the tent. What you do, slide the pole through the yellow sleeve and there's a little cup there, put that in there and you cinch it up with that strap and you do the same this end, slide the end of the pole in there 
and tighten it like that. You can always tension a bit more when the tent's erect, can you? Yeah. As you can see, this tent comes with six gold eastern eight inch stakes. So we just peg the four corners out. Get the structure. Yeah, so I've um, pegged it out now. Free that end. Free that end. And apart from a bit of tweaking, I'd say that's pretty much it. So now he's going to put the crossover poles in, just for illustration purposes. Obviously there's no wind around you, but first time pitching, just see how it goes, isn't it? So you put it up and then... But i got to be fair, I do like that tent. That's like a Velcro, that's like a Velcro. So you put the the end of the pole in the eyelet, the Velcro strap around there, then you attach these toggles. And those can be tensioned as well, can't they? Yeah. So repeat the procedure on all the four corners of Mark, yeah? Yeah. As you can see, the crossover poles are in place. And all you do then, you go around each one of these, pulling them up. So it gives a bit more tension on the, out, on the outer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it a couple of outings, two or three outings, try it out, and then what I'll do, I'll do a separate review on it then, and then let you know my thoughts on it. Well, there's my tent all set up in a stunning location, next to Clean Arenig. Max uh, just put his sleeping pad in and uh, his bag, sleeping bag I'll sort mine up now Danny's in the boffy which is just over a little ridge there he's getting the fire started I think he's sleeping in there as well um, so we're going to have uh, some food in there a nice fire a couple of drinks and have a nice night and then come back to the tents
with them folks in the park, you know. Danny's over there, I don't know if you can see him. Hello! He's on the Stella. Whoop whoop! I'm on the head of pitcher firewater, as per usual. So is Simon. Can't see me. No? No. Oh, that's a light, isn't it? Yeah. So we're just gonna chill in here now for a couple of hours, have something to eat. Get warmed up. Check that out. Right, tonight's tea is a recommendation by the Beauty Brothers. Stag chili. I know you had the. Uh, I think you had that one, did you, Daz? You say one very hot, so I got this one. It's probably too fucking hot. So I got that. And Tilda pure basmati rice. I got a mild version of the stag chili. And Uncle Ben's spicy Mexican rice. So that's almost cooked now, and that cost me two pound fifty. <coughs> so yeah, it's not bad. I've got a funny feeling that's gonna be pretty hot as well. Have you had that one before, man? No. You've had you've had, I've always had the dynamite one, have you? Yeah. Let's right. give it a go then. <sighs> Chili rice, a can of the Herefordshire fire water, in a boffy, North Wales, with a fire. <coughs> and an egg vower. <coughs> it doesn't get better than that. So what that's beauty. That's that's boiling that is mate. <laughs> don't, don't get this one. <laughs> it's too hot. Man. Dynamite. I can, nope. see, I can see the steam coming out of your ears and your nose. <laughs> right then, folks. Just got back to the tent. Just left the boffy. Danny's in there. He's staying in there tonight. He hasn't brought a tent, so. Back to the scarf one. Simon's tent's behind me. The Fowl Raven. The Bisco 2 Light. So what we thought we'd do is, me and Simon sleep in there tonight, because apparently you can fit two people in there, so let's see if, um, if that's correct. So right, we'll um, sleep in there tonight and let you know what it's like in the morning. Good morning everyone, welcome back to the tent. Uh, it's quarter to seven, I had an awesome night to sleep in this tent. Tab tent scarf one. And I'll tell you what, right? First impressions, absolutely fantastic. Not one bit of condensation. Nothing at all. Just unbelievable. I don't think I've ever been in a tent where there's, there hasn't been a little bit. But on this, just nothing. Which I find astounding, to be honest. But saying that, maybe it's the weather conditions. Maybe it'll do it in other kinds of weather, I don't know. But I gotta be fair. On my first look at this, I'm well impressed. Yeah, very happy. Well, as coffee is, the old coffee bags. And it's a, it's a pretty strong one, it's a hot lava java roast number six. Yeah, I really like this one. The only thing is, we didn't bring any powder milk, so we're gonna have to have it black, which is not a problem. Yeah, and for breakfast, I've got a Marks and Spencer's porridge. Um, it's a berry burst and it's got blackcurrants, raspberries and strawberries. So it's not just any old food, this is M&S food. Yeah, it should be good. Coffee time guys. 
got the old remote stove on the go. Titanium mug. And just a basic Nescafe 2-in-1. Looking forward to this. I need a coffee. Just want to show you this new lantern I bought. It's made by Black Diamond. It's called the Vault, or Black Diamond Vault. 250 lumens. And the, um, the light that comes off it is unreal. And it's got, um, it's got a USB port on the side of it, or on the end. And uh, you can use that as a power bank as well. You can charge um, your mobile phone on it as well. So yeah, you've got like a two-in-one piece of kit there, a lantern and a battery pack for your phone. I think it was 32 quid, I think it was. So yeah, not bad. Yeah, the wind's starting to pick up here now. Um, didn't have a breath of wind all night. As soon as we woke up, it's got really blustery. Um, I've had a cup of coffee, I've had my porridge. Mark's in his tent, he's just had, he just made his coffee, so uh, we're gonna start breaking up camp soon. Danny's still in the boffy. Yeah, it's been a good one, it's have. Snow down here just gets better and better for us. Like, you know, whenever we come here, we have, we have a good trip, so uh, yeah, it's been really enjoyable. Right, that's us all packed up, both tents put away, leave no trace as usual. Right, let's go see what Danny's up to back at the boffy. Back at the boffy you now, let's see if Danny's awake. CID, open up. Headley, Headley. Yeah. Hello. 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 Where's he seeing you here? Sticks. <laughs> Shaking on camera, Dick. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Smells lovely in here, isn't it? Wow. It's a bit fruity, like. It smells like roses. <laughs> Can I have a nice sleep? Wasn't too bad. Wasn't too bad. Warm in here, isn't it? Lovely here. Nice and clean and tidy. As it should be, As leave should no be. trace. Leave no trace. Mark's leaving a bottle of Prosecco for the next inhabitant. It's not mine, it's Danny brought this. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah, he did, didn't he? He did, didn't he? He did. Yeah, Danny brought this. Yeah. Think about your van, though, did he? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> It's not Karen's wine, is it? You'll freaking hang me, you will. No, I'm taking it back. What we noticed, that this part of the chimney of the bothy keeps on flying off. It's not attached to the, the actual top of the, the chimney pot. So, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to put that back inside the bothy, so if the NBA come here, maybe they can... Uh, Repair it or replace it, I don't know. So anyway, I'll put that back in the bothy for safekeeping. Bring us friends with another adventure in Stodonia. Thanks to Danny. See nice, you later guys. Nice to be up with Danny again. Um, give Danny's um, channel um, a viewing and a, and a subscribe. Rush outside Wales. That's it, rush outside Wales. Until the next time, from me, Mark and Danny. Take care, see you soon. See you now. Bye. 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 Not gonna believe this, guys. Just pulled into um, the Story Arms car park on the way down from Snowdonia and have a look who we bumped into. <laughs> oh, yeah. Die, can't be wild, a dragon. Yeah. And Damien, Bulldog Badger. What's the chance for that? Isn't it? What's the chance for that? What is the That's chance for that? that is. So, uh, give their channels a uh, like, subscribe, you know you want to. Subscribe guys.